I'm Judy Zelina, and this is the Mill Creek Government Channel. Today on our program, I would like to introduce you to the newest member of the Mill Creek Township family. Matt Exley is our newest hire in the, uh, in the Emergency Management Department, and he was hired on as the Emergency Management Coordinator and Fire Code Official. Hi, Judy. Matt, welcome to the program. It is so glad, I'm so glad to have you here, and look at that, I didn't even goof up on your title. Well, thanks for having me. Usually Matt goes by initials, and I had to say the whole thing, the whole title. But I am so glad to have you on, on board at Milker Township. Thank you. Um, I know that you bring a lot of experience to the table, so why don't you let our viewers know a little bit about you and your background? Um, I was a, uh, I've been in the fire service since 1996 and uh, doing emergency management functions since uh, 2004, both at the county level in Venango County as a deputy coordinator and now here in the municipal level. Um, I'm also a uh, Department of Homeland Security instructor and uh, State Fire Academy instructor as well. So I bring both the fire side and the emergency management side to the table. In fact, he is so good at his job and so passionate that I don't know how he did this, but he ended up having me go and take classes <laughs> on emergency management. But I'm here to tell you, I have learned the bottom line, if there's an emergency, just call Matt. So first off, what exactly is the Office of Emergency Management? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, oftentimes people don't don't understand what emergency management is. The day-to-day -day operations of, of an emergency within the township or in the area are taken care of by our regular responders, uh, fire uh, officials, police officers, emergency medical services. They handle most of the incidents. But what happens when an incident gets so large that it overwhelms the uh, the township resources, for example, and that's where we come into play. We basically um, act as a logistics branch and be able to get things to those emergency responders, get additional supplies, equipment, personnel, um, to be able to help them do their job out in the field. And so we set up an emergency operations center and um, basically provide all the tools or resources that the, that incident commander at the particular emergency needs to be able to do that. Once the incident's over, um, our responsibility therefore lies with recovery. So now we coordinate with the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and help people get back on their feet, whether it's damage assessments, helping them apply for small business loans, things like that, to be able to get the community back to the way it was. So basically, you work for Milker Township, but really, you're working with everybody throughout Erie County in the time of an emergency, correct? Pretty much, yeah. It, it, it expands. It, every emergency starts local mm -hmm. and expands from there. That's one of the reasons why during Hurricane Katrina, you saw very little response from FEMA. And that was because um, the next level of government cannot start taking action on an emergency until the lower level allows them or invites them in. So for example, if the resources exceed Mill Creek Township's capabilities, then I ask for help from the county. And once it exceeds the county's capabilities, they ask for help from the state and so on and so forth up to the federal level. Okay, so personally, what are your duties in this in this department? Um, several. Um, I have... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not only uh, responsible for those responding to emergencies, but as we know, and, and you know, we're very thankful that emergencies in Mill Creek Township, these large-scale emergencies don't happen very often, but when they do, they're pretty catastrophic. So a lot of my time is um, spent developing relationships with local businesses, um, other emergency response organizations, um, being able to get everybody organized so that when these disasters strike, we can quickly respond to them. Give me an example. You, you mentioned working with other emergency respon mm -hmm. responses. Who would that entail? Everyone from the local fire departments, okay. the Mill Creek Fire Departments, to Mill Creek Paramedic Service, um, the Mill Creek Police Department, up to Erie County Emergency Management, Pima, uh, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, and so on and so forth. Um, we, we have a very good working relationship with the City of Erie Emergency Management, and that allows us to um, you know, both departments are fairly small. Right. So okay. we can call for help from each other when we need to. So uh, being able to form those relationships is an integral part of the job. Okay. Now, I know we don't have an emergency every single day of the Correct. week, five days a week with weekends off. Right. So what exactly, 
would you do if there is no emergency? What does your duties include at that time? The biggest part of our job okay. is um, preparedness and mitigation. And basically what that involves is when we're not having an emergency, we get to look at the big picture. Um, we get to see all right, what areas of the township are more susceptible to disasters than others, and if we identify those, how can we start to prevent that from happening before it does? So for example, maybe we see that there's a, um, a sewer pump station that is close to a uh, creek or, or doesn't have a generator power, which our, ours um, all do now thanks to our the proactiveness of our sewer department. But if we identify something like that, then we can apply for mitigate, mitigation grants, be able to come in and fix that problem before it becomes a catastrophe. Okay. All right. Now, here's what I would like you to do for <laughs> me. <laughs> I'd like you to give me an example of a disaster and what the correct protocol would be. You know what? Actually, we'll use one that that actually happened here in Mill Creek. Okay. Um, the the flooding in in uh, Bell Valley, if you remember, uh, several years ago, I there do. was I uh, do remember a that. large yes. amount of flooding over there, and uh, in fact, we lost uh, the the accessibility to one of our firehouses. Right. Unfortunately, Bell Valley Fire Department was um, was flooded. So, emergency management not only. In that case, we provided assistance to Bell Valley, whatever they needed. Um, basically, it provides kind of a one-stop shop for that fire chief in that area or that police chief to be able to come to us and say, I need five boats. He doesn't have to think about, okay, this department has a boat, that department has a boat. We find those resources for him oh, okay. um, in that situation. And then in addition to that, after the immediate flooding was over, then we uh, brought in the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency and did tours of of the area and had residents report to us damage. That is probably, after an emergency, that's probably one of the most important things that we do because the amount of information that we gain from the residents decides whether we're going to get federal funding and, and, and uh, money from the federal and state government back to help rebuild. In that case, we, we were too short of the federal uh, cutoff to be able to qualify for that disaster funding. Oh, so okay. after these disasters, when emergency management comes out and asks for these things, um, it, it never hurts to have too much information. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you something. This guy has really been a busy guy since he's <laughs> since he's been on board, and even beforehand, because he was working with that department kind of like on a part-time mm -hmm. interim type of basis. And one thing that Matt. Um, and, and I'm very proud to say we did an article in the most recent issue of the In Mill Creek magazine that stated that Mill Creek was storm ready. Mm -hmm. Matt, what exactly does that mean? Storm Ready is a program designed by the National Weather Service. It's a certification program, and it allows us to make sure that our township is prepared to respond to any of these natural disasters uh, dealing with weather. Uh, we all remember that next year will be the uh, 30th anniversary of the May 31st, 1985 tornadoes that came through Albion. And that was kind of, um, I remember as a kid experiencing that in, uh, in my hometown. Um, and that was kind of the catalyst for me wanting to get this started. What it allowed us to do is take a look at all of our severe weather plans within the township and be able to hone those and make them even better. And we've even gone to the point now that we have protocols for each type of weather watch or weather warning that lets us figure out who are we going to notify, how are we going to take precautions. And that makes us, if the township is prepared, it makes us better prepared to respond to the needs of residents. Okay. Now, you implemented this, didn't you? Correct. I mean, didn't you? You looked into it and right. you got all the paper. But how long did it take you to, to get this up and running? Um, and it to took this, us. Get us certified? Probably about um, six to eight months mm -hmm. of. Uh, the, the nice thing is, uh, you know, my predecessors had a, uh, a large amount of the emergency operations plans for Mill Creek already prepared, which was nice. We just had to hone those and, and uh, you know, bring them up to current dates. And uh, so it took about six to eight months to complete. And I do want to state, too, that we, all, we have always had a very good emergency management and fire code uh, department in Mill Creek Township. It's always played a, a, an important part in, in Mill Creek Township. And we were without um, an emergency management coordinator for a while. Uh, about eight Matt, months. You're right. Matt mm -hmm. was filling in. And I'm just speaking from what I've seen Matt do. He is the perfect person 
to take that department from here and keep moving forward. So he, okay. he has implemented quite a few programs. You're talking, when you were talking about storms, the tornado and so forth, there's something that I see on the weather and I, you know, I guess I, could you clarify for our viewers because if I get confused, I'm sure there's one or two, not everybody, I'm sure some understand it. What is the difference between a storm watch and a storm warning? That's a great question. Um, a storm watch is means that conditions are right for one to occur, um, but it isn't necessarily going to happen. Just the atmosphere is right. A weather warning means that either conditions are imminent or that they are occurring right now. And really, it, it kind of is exactly what it says. A watch, you need to be prepared and watch out for severe weather coming in. A warning is, hey, hunker down and, and in that uh, basement. be prepared. Exactly. Find a closet, right? right? One thing that we would like to mention is, and this was some confusion that was last year, if you remember the the, the polar vortex and, and everything like that that came through, um, we had a number of daycares close because they heard on the television that there was a level three warning, travel warning, and everybody should stay off the roads. Um, one of the unfortunate things about where we're located is there are several Erie counties within the tri-state area right around us. And in this case, the news was uh, broadcasting that there was a level three warning and it happened to be in Erie County, Ohio. We don't have anything like that here. The only person who can order people to stay off the roads is the governor. Um, and so it's, it's very important to keep in touch with your local um, things. Uh, we have Facebook, Twitter. Um, we also have a new program called Nixle, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And um, those are the, where you want to get your information because sometimes with uh, broadcasting to such a large area, um, the traditional news agencies have to pull in from their entire viewing area. So it can get confusing sometimes. So. Okay, I have a question. I mm -hmm. want to step back. I have, uh, you had said that the only one that can order people to stay off the roads is the governor. Correct. Really like the mayor can't say to stay off the roads? We can. Can they suggest, is it more like they can suggest? Correct. The same way with an evacuation and a, um, uh, and to be able to do area-wide road closures. We certainly, the police department, the fire department, um, the township supervisor can certainly close portions due to an emergency, if okay. you will. But for example, um, usually in order to close, say, Interstate 90, Interstate 79, for something other than a motor vehicle accident, uh, hazmat incident, okay. if it's due to just weather conditions, that generally comes down from the state. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Um, I, so the, the, this is why I never, <laughs> could wake up in the morning and say, oh, the, the township's building closed. Don't right. drive on the roads. This is why I was there every day. Exactly. All right. Talking about emergencies, um, and I know you are, um, you know, very, very adamant about people being prepared mm -hmm. for emergencies. How can I, as an individual, prepare? We have a motto that has come around. Um, a, a lot of times people tend to look at municipal government, state government, and federal government and think that they're going to be their heroes. Um, and we have many heroes within the, the ranks of, of uh, our organizations. A lot of you guys are heroes. However, I'm just saying. we want to have people be your own hero. Okay. Um, in, in the event of a disaster, uh, the average is 72 hours sometimes before uh, help can get to you. If there is a, if, if any of the viewers remember the Albion tornadoes, I mean, roads were closed, blocked by trees. Right. Uh, there were whole neighborhoods that were um, basically cut off from the outside world. So you need to be prepared for 72 hours to be able to do that. Um, one of the best ways you can do that is design an emergency kit, uh, have an emergency kit together. An emergency kit. You know, I have to tell you something funny. Matt had mentioned this to me earlier. Oh, everyone should have an emergency kit. Matt, I'd really like to know everything that needs to be in this emergency kit because to me, it's a flashlight. Absolutely. And I can only hope that flashlight has batteries <laughs> in it or else I'm walking around with my cell phone until it dies. You can, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so really, what should we have in an emergency kit? And you're saying that this should be in a place where we could get it right away, correct? Right. 
Yep. Uh, it, for example, in my home, our emergency kit is in our basement in our area of refuge from a tornado. Um, we have things like um, enough water to last us for three days. Um, we have extra blankets. I have four kids, so we have things for the kids. Um, documents, important documents, copies of those, any medications that you may need, um, food to last you three days. And you know, one of the things for a family like ours, and uh, this is something that I, I talk to a lot of people about, is an emergency kit doesn't have to be um, all at once and this huge thing. Um, you know, a lot of us are, are working paycheck to paycheck. We have bills to pay and, and it costs some money to put right. together an emergency kit. Right. So what we do is um, every time we go to the store, maybe we pick up two or three extra canned goods and we pick up uh, a, um, a pack of batteries. And we bring those and add that under our grocery bill. And in a period of time, over six months, we've amassed a pretty decent emergency kit with it. We have things in ours like if the if the power goes out and we can't cook on our stove, we have an electric stove, um, we have the little chafing fuels to be able to do that. Um, an important thing to remember that most people don't remember is we have all these canned goods, it's great, they're sitting on our shelves, but we forgot a can opener. So make sure that you have a can opener and your emergency kit for that. Um, things like that. <laughs> so um, a great place to go for that kind of information, you can link to it through our Facebook and uh, Twitter pages is ready.gov. They have a great uh, list there and we also have a number of uh, pamphlets and brochures at the township that people can pick up to go over that kind of stuff with them. Okay, now in, in the event of an emergency, my family's going to be my first concern. How do you, you know, instruct people what you should do with your family and also pets? Absolutely. That, that, the mm. pets are, are family members to They you. are. What do they do? Um, in fact, uh, one of the things that we're pushing right now is to have a communications plan with your family. You want to make sure that you're able to um, get in contact and know where your family is at any point in time. So develop how, how you're going to talk to each other. It's kind of just like a fire drill. Where are you going to meet? Corner store. Um, Some place that, uh, God forbid, a tornado comes through oh will gosh. still be there. Right. Um, you don't want to pick the tree in the front yard because that, that may not be there. But um, uh, be able to have a communications uh, plan, have an out-of-state contact to be able to contact each other. Um, one of the things we recommend now is you use text messages. In the event of a disaster, we saw this in 9-11, we saw this during Hurricane Katrina, um, a lot of times when phone calls can't make it through, that little text message still can. Okay. So use text messages to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned animals. Right. Um, another thing we learned from Katrina is uh, that people died because they didn't want to leave their animals behind and the Red Cross shelters wouldn't take animals. So the counties and the state has come up with an animal response team. They will actually, um, I can call them in when I set up a, uh, have the Red Cross set up a shelter and we'll set up an animal shelter right beside. So that way you can evacuate and you can protect your family and be able to do that. But animals is a great thing to have in your emergency kit as well. Make sure you have food, a favorite toy, things like that for your animal as well. Okay. These are great tips. They they really are. And I wasn't kidding when I thought an emergency kit was a flashlight. He knows me. <laughs> but Matt, okay, that's me individually, me and my family. Now, on a larger scale, should you be consulted when um, uh, for any large events in the areas like um, festivals uh -huh. or concerts? One of the great things about emergency management is we're used to looking at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So um, we like to be involved and like to be notified of things like that because we have access to things. For example, um, the Steely Dan concert that they had at the Prescott Partnership. <clears throat> um, we kind of, because of the transition in emergency management, we didn't get a chance to um, really help with that this year. However, on the day of the event, because we knew about it, right. um, we had the opportunity to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, get in contact with the National Weather Service mm -hmm. and be able to watch anything that was coming across, okay. be able to um, get that sort of information to them to protect those people that were out there on the point. So any kind of that stuff, we have a great way of, of being able to help out with that. So really, if, you're, if your organization is planning on a, a festival or concert or something, Feel free to give Matt a call because he'll be glad to come down and give you any advice and maybe help divert, um, you know, something that 
an emergency or something that may happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Preparedness and mitigation is mm -hmm. our job. We certainly won't plan the event for you. Um, we just don't have those resources. But uh, when it comes to being able to tie in the emergency stuff to it, it's a, a great starting point. OK. Matt, what is wireless emergency alerts? I've heard about those, but I don't really know what they are. They're fairly new. Um, most of the uh, cellular providers now offer them. You may have seen, uh, we've only had a couple this year, but you may have seen uh, a message pop up on your cell phone for a tornado warning okay. or a uh, blizzard warning, something like that. Those are... Um, put out by the emergency alert system that we have. And uh, it doesn't cost anything. Um, it's a free for you, so don't uh, don't turn them off. They will, um, in fact, most phones, you can't turn them off anymore. Okay. Uh, but uh, you may see those pop up, and they are um, divided down to a geographic area. So uh, if you in a specific zip code or a specific area is when they're going to go off. So you may. If you're in Crawford County, you may not get something for that's in Erie County oh, necessarily. All right. So um, not everybody's phones are going to go off for everything. So it's area-based. Yes. OK. Now, how else can I stay informed? Like we mentioned before, we're trying to move the Office of Emergency Management into the uh, new age. And uh, so we've created a Facebook page. You can search for us, or Mill Creek Township um, Emergency Management. And then uh, on Twitter, we have uh, at Mill Creek EMA is our handle on Twitter. Um, we try to put information on there as far as uh, special events, um, tips, tricks, things like that uh, to prepare yourself before a disaster. Uh, in fact, yesterday we uh, we posted on there as well. We had a, a set of power lines down that were across Interchange Road. Right. And if any of you have ever been around Interchange Road around Christmas, you know that you'd rather be anywhere else but Interchange <laughs> and Peach Street. Um, and that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> that, can, that can be like that if we have a traffic tie-up okay. like that. So right. we're able to get that message out to keep people to avoid the area. Great, great. Um, Nixle is your new little buzzword. I keep it hearing is. you talk about. Tell our viewers about Nixel. Nixel is a great service. It, it, it's a win-win. Um, it's free for the township. And it's we like free. free. <laughs> we, we do. Like we, like, we like free. And uh, it's free for the residents as well. You can uh, get online one of two ways. You can either go to nixel.com and enter your zip code and select us. And uh, that's probably the best way to do it because you can select what kind of alerts that you want to get. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a cell phone, um, you can text um, Mill Creek, the word Mill Creek, to 888 777. Um, and it will come back and ask you for your zip code because, again, it's area-based. And that allows us to send out warnings, alerts, things like that to your cell phone. For example, if we have a, um, a, a missing elderly person that uh, wandered away from their home, we can send out not only those alerts, but it will be able to link back to a page with their picture on it, for example, so that everybody in the neighborhood or in the community can keep an eye out for this resident. Um, things like yesterday, road closures, um, school issues, anything like that. We can keep the community updated in real time with this. And uh, then it provides a link back to a larger page. If we were to do, say, a um, the, the new buzz thing that's coming through that all of us emergency management uh, folks are planning for is Bakken Oil. If you remember, we had a, uh, um, there was a train derailment and explosion in Canada not too long ago yes. from this Bakken crude oil. And we have uh, a large amount coming through Erie at any one time. So we're, we're preparing for that. And um, one of the nice things with Nixle is, again, it's location-based. If we have a derailment like that, we can send out a, a alert message through Nixle to cell phones and email addresses and be able to not only alert people that that's going on, but the link back to the web page uh, will actually give you a, um, a map of evacuation routes, where you need to go, the nearest shelters, things like that, and it's all right in your hands right away. And again, how do I get this on my phone? Again, you can either go to Nixle, N-I-X-L-E, Dot com mm -hmm. and enter your zip code, or you can uh, text uh, in the subject or in the uh, two line. You put eight 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 seven seven seven, and uh, when you send the word Mill Creek to that address, it will come back and ask for your zip code again, and you'll be signed up. Okay. Are there in uh, instructions on your Facebook page? There are. There are on, links on, on Facebook to, and Twitter as well. You know how to sign up for this. Yep. I mean, I, it sounds absolutely fantastic. I am so glad to see. Um, Mill Creek, keeping up with the times mm -hmm. with Facebook and Twitter. I know a lot of our departments have their own Facebook page now. 
it's great, uh, the little tips that you're sending out and um, also keeping us informed for any disasters or emergencies. All right, you know, Matt, you're doing a lot for us, for our community, um, and our time's getting to the end, but if you can briefly let our viewers know, how can they get involved and, and help you? Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, helping our resources also helps us. So, for example, um, you know, if you're able to and you have the, the ability to do it, um, becoming involved in your already existing community volunteer organizations is probably the biggest help. We not only cooperate with our volunteer fire departments who can always use help and always use additional uh, members to be able to help out in the community, but if you're not ready to become a volunteer firefighter, you can do things like get involved with the Red Cross, volunteer organizations active in disasters. Uh, one of the things that we partner with Erie County with is the Community Emergency Response Team. It's just regular folks, just like you and I, who um, are taught very, very basic skills that if a disaster happens, um, they can uh, survive in their community for up to 72 hours by helping their neighbors. So, Matt, those are great tips. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Now, if our viewers have any questions, how can they get a hold of you at the township? You can either call the main township number um, at the 833-1111, uh, or you can uh, link to us. There's contact information that you can get to us through our Facebook and Twitter accounts, and we monitor those every day, so you can uh, get to us through that as well. Okay, they can shoot you an email also, can't they? Absolutely. Uh, my email address is mxley, E-X-L-E-Y, -E at millcreektownship.com. He has great information, and he has answers to all of your questions. <laughs> I don't too. know about all of them, but we'll try. And I think when I'm done <laughs> with this show, I know what I'm doing in an emergency. I'm going over to Matt's house. <laughs> I'm just saying. Matt, thank you so much. Great to have you on board. You, it's been a pleasure. This is just the first of many programs I know we're going to be doing. Absolutely. So viewers, if you have any questions, feel free. Give them a call. Thank you for tuning into the Milker Government Channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.